everyone, it's Kim. So I just was um, gonna start this um, project that I'm working on where I'm dyeing um, some rayon ribbon that I'm going to use for um, my business cards. I have, I, I always like to do everything kind of strange. I guess you guys should know that by now, but it's always gotta be a little bit different. But um, when I was just doing my candle business, I had decided that I wanted to have my business cards be made out of hang tags and um, I bought an embosser so I can emboss my business name and then a little a little stamp that would put my um, name and my email address, I mean my web address and my phone number on there. And, you know, I also stained them with tea and I scented them with my signature scent that I have. It's called Candelaria. Well, anyway, so that way when they got my business card, it smelled nice. I mean, you know, since this business is about smelling, you know, like the, the fragrance of candles and soaps and things like that, I wanted it to, you know, be different. And also because when I would do a booth or something, I would have my little um, hang tags hanging on this little phone thing. And all it is is just a little vintage antique toy phone that I stuck a wire on the back. And it just sits on my table and all the little business cards hang on it. And so then they can just take a card and, and carry it in their in their wallet or their purse because it's the same size as a uh, business card. But I wanted to add some ribbon to it and I was just gonna buy, I use a lot of tans, blacks, and um, um, tea stain colors, but I wanted something to give me a little bit of color and I started seeing on um, Etsy how they have all these really vibrant gorgeous um, rayon ribbons that are um, Kind of watercolory and the colors fade together and so this was just a little test piece that I did with um, purple uh, and um, teal um, It's not ink. It's some um, liquid. It's highly pigmented liquid dye and it's actually called Dyna Flow, okay? And I don't know if you can see the name. I don't want to tip it too much. And so it's very pigmented, but it's just like water. So, I mean, it could be a big fat mess. And so what you do is a court like a lot of the a lot of the videos I'd seen on YouTube, it showed where you would take the 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 ribbon this seam binding, I mean, and you would, of course, wet it, and then you would use, like, stamp pads and use the ink from the stamp pads and rub it on top of the um, butcher paper and then rub it on there, and it would just stain the whole thing using the water. Well, what I did was, or what I'm doing, is I wet, I took a whole bunch of seam binding off. Like, I just kind of, you know, like when you wind up a water hose, you just wind it around your arm, you know, like that. And so I took a whole bunch like that, and then more than this actually, and then I twisted it and I wetted it, and that's what's here in this Pyrex pan right here. So this has already been wet and I wrung it out. So what I'm, my, my goal is is that I wanna put like just some of these colors, I'm just gonna drop it on there and let them bleed into each other. I don't really have any rhyme or reason other than I probably am gonna follow possibly this color scale right here. And so let's just see if it works. So I'm just using, I didn't want to use like little squirt bottles. So I'm just using um, these little pipettes. I figured they'll work. And so then, like I said, I'm just dropping this on there. And since the fabric is, um, the, the, the seam binding is rayon and it's wet, it'll bleed into each other. So I don't mind that. I think it's kind of cool. So I hope you can see this. It's going to be kind of tie-dyed, I guess. This is just something new. But I wanted something with color because basically what I'm doing this for is it's going to be my own signature ribbon. So that way it's not like everybody else's. It's kind of just my own ribbon that I'll have and, and it'll be on my products, especially like as the holidays come around and, you know, just to add some color to... Uh, my packaging because I do um, do everything very neutral in colors I like I really I really just am one of those kind of people that really like a lot of um, uh, beiges and browns and blacks that vintage antique colors 
The yellows don't seem to um, stay mixed as well as the other colors. And this color right here is called brass. It's kind of a really old, like it does, it looks like an old brass color. But these weren't really that expensive. I got them from like a school supply company and um, they were like less than $3 a piece for the little bottles and I think that they'll really last a long time. And so I guess I'm just gonna finish by starting over with the colors again. There's like a whole bunch of colors and I really wasn't sure what to get. So I bought like one round of them and then I thought, well, that's not enough. I want some more colors. And so I went back in and ordered some more. And of course there's different shades. You don't have to get like all these really vibrant colors like I got. So now what I'm gonna do is, is just kind of move them back and forth to make sure that they you know, went, it went through. And this stuff gets heat set. So it would be best if I had a um, heat gun, but of course my heat gun broke. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out of this container because there's a lot of that stuff on there dripping in there and I don't wanna get it all over. So what I'm gonna use is, is just um, a broken blow dryer, I guess you'd call it. And I'm just gonna try to heat set it in that way. So let me just get a napkin and get the blow dryer. But I mean, I hope you can see that if the color's even good enough, I mean, What I think I'm gonna do is stop the camera. It's gonna take a while for that to dry. I mean, it's just too saturated. But I'm gonna go ahead, and that would be too long and too loud. I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead and let it dry, and then I'll let you know what it looks like after. But I think you can kind of see the colors. That helps. Look at, I mean, isn't that pretty? And so that's gonna be like my custom ribbon. So when I package things, it's going to always have my, I don't know, I just thought they kind of reminded me of like fairy colors or, you know, I just love these rich kind of jewel tones like that if I'm going to go for color. And, um, and so that's it. But anyway, I'll dry it. And see, if you use a heat gun, it's kind of neat because if you want the crinkly look, it'll actually kind of shrivel it up like, you know, like when you've burn something with the iron, how it kind of crinkles up. So that would be really neat. I wish I had a heat gun right now, but because I would like that crinkly look, but it does stay crinkly if you kind of just bunch it and then use the dryer on it because that's how it worked with that little piece. There was something else I wanted to tell you too. I use um, hang tags a lot for, that's kind of like my signature thing of my packaging. I, I use them, this is the way I've been packaging my soap now. Um, I've been using, I buy from a company called Webstront it's unbleached parchment paper. And um, only problem with it is, is that it's, it's not supposed, you know, nothing's supposed to stick to it. So I have a hard time when I'm wrapping it up, the little pieces of tape, but I noticed that old fashioned, um, that old fashioned cellophane tape sticks to it better than any of the tapes. And so after I've tea stained my labels here, they're not scented or anything, but I tea stain them, then I tie it on there and then I use my wax seal on the top but i was thinking okay how am i going to put my my um my ingredients and i am so sick of dealing with labels because i am either always out of ink or you know like there's just always something and and so i thought you know what i'm just gonna see if i could buy a rubber stamp that i could put most of my ingredients on it and then um i can just check box all the ingredients that are going to be as i'm wrapping them up i can just dot it to checkbox what I have in the as far as the ingredients go. So this is what my stamp looks like. I hope you can see that if it clears up. And it really, believe it or not, it 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 really prints well. It was like eleven dollars. I don't have to buy, all I have to do is buy a stamp pad once in a while and I just get a good um, archival stamp pad and and look 
I can check off the stuff that I have on there. The only thing that I was mad at myself after I checked it and checked it a million times is that I forgot to add um, um, silk on there. But I'm just going to go ahead and just write it in there because I had left a blank there for in case as time goes on, if there's something crazy that I'm putting in there, which, you know, I always put a lot of crazy stuff in there, I'll need to write it in. But, I mean, this is going to work for me because then I don't have to deal with worrying about if I've got ink in my printer or labels and any of that. So that's the way I'm doing it for right now. Also because I enjoy using the hang tags and I just felt like putting an additional label on there would take away from it. So see, before I wrap it up, I can just stamp it. I don't have this one stamped right now because I had this was, I'd wrap this up before I'd gotten my stamp. But, um, and that's it, you know, and then I still have these two panels that if I want to add something else to it, I can. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you for in case anybody was interested in doing something like that because I just think I'm gonna I have it there that those are the checked off ingredients or what's in it and you know it's more detailed than I've seen on some soap. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you and share the um, ribbon with you and I will do a quick video after I've got it dry when I've got them on my um, actual business cards to show you what they look like. Okay, thanks. I'll be making soap this weekend.